Um, what I want to show you is how to take something that's from a storyboard or a wireframe and then place in the correct coding into uh, working with HTML. And what I have up here is a simple storyboard um, that I created and I use a template out there there's plenty of templates out there that you can actually work with it makes your life a lot easier and what I like about this is that it looks like the actual web browser and then each of the squares is divided up into sections and each square is basically 32 pixels by 32 pixels and so what you want to do is you want to kind of have a better understanding of the width and height of each section um, because as you start working with the layouts uh, you're going to have to determine the positioning and determine the width and height so as you're doing your storyboard you want to kind of keep that in back of your mind the other aspect of this um, is knowing the width of the website you're going to be working with and in this case I'm going with a 1024 width I'm working with. That's a typical resolution nowadays. Um, some of these templates you can actually go and, and they have it set up for 960 and 800 um, and you can actually this one has all three uh, for that purpose. But I'm going to go in and I'm setting it up and, and notice what I did here is I section off each section and I basically put in the name of the section, the width and height, little contents and comments so it helped me to figure out what I'm doing um, and you notice how automatically you know it's falling one section is falling from another so after my header section I have a nav section and then I have the main section which is going to include an image and then a footer section and notice how I put in the width and height and I, I'm trying to keep it simple now as you start learning more about coding yes you can get a little more complex so like over here here's a complex wireframe Notice how each section is determined by the width and height, and it's also telling where the positioning is on that page. It's going to be 28 pixels down, 28 pixels to the right. So it's basically indicating where the starting elements are going to be. Now, for this, you know, we in, in, in my courses, we want to try to keep it simple because you'll learn more um, of this as you move on. But I wanted to show you a little more complex one and so you can see that um, but again I want to try to keep it simple I want to try to keep it clean and so really you know your your pages should have be consistent it should have a header a nav a main section and a footer and so what I want to do here is keeping this in the back of my mind I'm going to come over in my notepad and I'm going to basically add some coding Okay, so the first thing we always start off with, and, and, and it talks about readings and, and so forth, we always start off with a doc type tag. It's a declaration that indicates what type of website it is um, and how what type of coding it's using. As you move forward, there's so many different types of doc type, and they discuss in lectures. Um, also, there's information out there at, uh, uh, on websites about it, so definitely check it out. I do talk about more detail in some other videos on that part. So I'm going to start off with that and then I always follow up with the HTML tag. Okay, and again, basic structure. I just wanted to get you to understand the basic structure. Then you can start adding new things in afterwards. Okay, in the HTML tag, we're going to have a head tag. This head tag, anything that's in the head tag, will not appear on the body of the web page. Um, so things like the um, we will put in keywords in this section. We'll put in titles for the web page here. And these are not going to appear on the main page itself. So there's a certain areas that, you know, automatically uh, that you usually include. And one is like the title. So like in this case, um, I'm going to put a title of Rain, the Rain or Shine Golf League. And the key thing about this is that the title tag, this is where it's going to appear um, in the browser's title bar or on the tab. So it doesn't appear on the page, it appears up there. And so when you bookmark something, it automatically will look at the title tag. And it'll, that's what you tend to want to have a little more description in that part. And as with anything, you always have to have a closing tag. And we always indicate that by putting a slash in followed by, its, by the actual tag name. And then, of course, we're done with that. I'm going to put a closing head. So again, some tags you do not need to have a closing tag um, associated, but almost every tag needs it 
majority of it. So after you have your head tag, you have your body tag. Okay, everything in the body section is going to contain the information that you want to appear on that web page. So that always comes after the closing head. Now, since we have set this up into separate sections, what we want to do, and it's easier to do it now, is to set up my sections into my main page, and we use what we call our div tags. Div tags allow us to go in and create separate sections and allow us to control the formatting and positioning of that section independent from the other div sections. So here, if we look at my storyboard, I have pretty much, I have one, two, three, four sections. I have the header, the navigation, the main, and the footer. So I'm going to have to have four separate sections that contain that information on that page. We do that by adding the div tag, and then we have to name it. If we don't, it does, when we apply a style to it, it will not know what style to apply to which div tag. So that's very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in div, and we follow. We put in the attribute ID to name that section with an equal sign, and in quotations we put the name. So you notice how I put the word header because that's how I named it on my storyboard. So I'm trying to keep that consistent. Okay, you got to have a closing div tag. Now you got to remember you're going to probably have some content in that section. So we're just putting in the basic structure first and then you can go back in and add some other information. So I'm going to put another div tag in. I should have four div tags because I have four separate sections. So as we're seeing here, nothing major. We're just typing in the structures, typing in each section. So I got one more. Now you can name your div sections differently, but try not to be too long of words. Um, so you know, and try not to use the same names as a regular HTML tag, like a P tag or a body tag. It gets confusing. Which one are you going to apply a style to? Okay. So now I got all my sections set up. I'm going to put my closing body tag in. And then I don't forget about the closing HTML tag. Okay, I'm going to save this. Now I typically just do a save as if you're doing it the first time. I've already had it saved. And what you want to do is if you're using Notepad, just change all files down here where it says save as type. And where it says index, make sure I already have it saved, but you put in index.html. Save it into the folder that you want. And this is going to ask me to replace it since I am already had it saved. And then what I want to do is over here in my browser, I'm just going to click on the reload button. It's called Refresh in Internet Explorer. It's also called Reload in Firefox. And it automatically will reload and add the information that I have onto my page. Now you'll notice there's nothing comes up, but if you look at the tab up here, you'll notice it'll say Rain or Shine Golf League. And that comes from the title tag. I like to put, I always, when I work with my note, you know, with my coding, I always like to have the browser, and when I make some changes, I'm going to automatically update it over here to see what it looks like. So now, all you have to do is start adding some content to this page. So you have it set up, the different sections. So you're not going to go in um, and put any t content that's not within a div section. So you're going to have to take a look what you have here. And you're going to have your content for anything for the header up in the header section, anything for navigation in the navigation section. So like here with navigation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in some, or copy in some text that I have for my navigation. And um, so it saves me some time for typing in. I'm just going to press my enter key, 
and I'm just going to put this in. And what it does is it's putting in text in for uh, the navigation. And you notice it's going to be completely within that section called nav. Okay, it's not outside it, it's inside it. And in here you'll learn more about creating links and other videos. But you'll notice I'm using the A tag. And you notice how the attribute href is referencing a page. This is called relative addressing. And it'll talk about this more in some other videos. But here I'm putting my code in. And let's see how it looks. I'm going to save it. I don't have to do a save as now because I've already saved it. Oops, I have this open so I have to redo it. And it's my fault because I resaved it before. So I'm just going to give it a different name. That was my fault because the way I have it set up on my computer. And uh, what's going to happen here, it's not going to refresh, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. Um, over here I'm going to put the 1 in because I saved it with a 1. Uh, you can actually just change the, the address, the name up here, um, because it automatically will know it. And just press your return key. And you'll notice that your navigation comes into play. So here, if we're going to go in and we want to put some more information in, so we want to put some information on the main web page, I'm going to come down here in the main section, and I'm going to put in some code. Now, as you put in text, everything you put in has to be tagged. So notice how welcome has an H3 tag, and then it has a closing H3. HR, closing HR. P tag, closing P tag. This is indicating a paragraph tag. And here we have a phrase that's bold. So you have to make sure that every part of your information that you want on your page is tagged. That's why it's called a hypertext markup language. So you're going in and tagging the text. Now again, the key here is to get your divisions in first and then just add your content into each of the sections. So I'm going to save this and come over reload. And you can see my content has been added right below. And you'll see the HR is a horizontal rule, a little line going across. Here's the we love the game, it's bold. And you'll notice an extra line in between a space, and that's because of the paragraph tags. The paragraph adds extra lines. So all you're doing here is you're taking the, the starting point of this wireframe and you're going in and setting up the sections. So what you want to do first is put the sections in first by using the div tag and then go back in and add content to each of the sections. That will make your life easier because as you move forward then you want to control the positioning. Well, we can then add styles to each of those sections that will control the width and height. So that's something what, you know you want to start off with first, and instead of adding afterwards, because it gets a little confusing. Just remember, when you're laying out your page and you want to position it totally, you want to use div tags, and every section of your page will have a div tag, and your content will be in one of those sections. Hopefully that gives you a little starting point to start right after you create your sketch or your wireframe and what you can do next when you're adding into Notepad.